So we are here today to talk about digital transformations and data-driven strategies. So there's a lot we can talk about. We can take probably all day, but we're going to try to just hit on some key points as we go through this. Um, but just to kick us off, why don't we do some quick intros and talk about how data-driven strategies and or digital transformation fit within your role? I can start us off. Sure. Hi, everyone. So excited to be here with you all today. I'm Irina Barsky. I'm our Director of Digital Demand Generation here at Danone. I've been with the company for eight years, and I've been in the e-com uh, and digital marketing space for the last 17 years. And I lead our retail media performance marketing across our full portfolio of brands, across platforms like Walmart, Instacart, the Amazons of the world. And uh, data is integral. It's at the heart of what we do. It, given the real-time measurement aspect of our investments, it's a critical element to informing our strategy and our daily executions. And transformation is a lot, you know, the, ever since the pandemic hit, there's no denying the impact that it had on online grocery. And we've had to do a lot of transformation internally in order to ensure that we have the right infrastructure and capabilities to set us up for success. Hi, I'm Tanya Koss. Um, I am the Global Paid Media Strategy Lead for IBM. I've been at IBM for about seven years now, um, first kind of as a paid media consultant internally with the business units. And when we went through a big marketing transformation um, in our organizational structure, um, came into this role about three years ago or so. So um, IBM is in the business of digital transformation. We partner with a lot of different um, companies and brands to get them to that point. Um, mostly in, you know, computing, you know, we're helping people get, uh, you know, NASA, get a person on the moon with our digital data uh, crunching computers, as you might have seen in like hidden figures and so on. But then also in the current world, we're helping um, get chat um, chatbots and AI assistance in place with uh, companies like CVS or McDonald's or, you know, uh, you know, other companies like that, huge, huge companies. Um, so in terms of marketing specifically, digital transformation started really with our organizational transformation, um, really getting ourselves primed to transform as a, as a organization um, in marketing, and then uh, transforming our ad tech stack um, and our uh, MarTech stack. We have a huge integration with Adobe, um, which feeds into our audience strategy overall. So our audience strategy was a huge transformation in terms of how we do our media buying and media planning. And that also goes into an omni-channel um, execution strategy as well. Awesome. I'm Jake Hirsch. I lead digital and e-commerce marketing for personal care for Unilever. So while not as uh, fun as putting uh, astronauts on the moon, um, the deodorants and soaps that are hopefully in all of your houses are uh, uh, part of what we manage day to day. Um, in terms of digital, I think day to day work-wise, that's what my team lives and breathes. Um, everything we do is around digital strategy and figuring out how to best reach our consumers more efficiently. Um, we take all of our media investment centrally for a personal care business, optimize and manage through uh, different channels, uh, you know, collapsing the funnel into one uh, central investment hub um, and figuring out really how we provide our products and services to best meet our you know, changing consumers' lives and uh, do so more efficiently. Um, and from a digital transformation standpoint, I know you guys already kind of spoke a little bit to that. Is there anything you, else you want to expand on in terms of examples of how it fits in within your role in organization or some key drivers for digital transformation? Take this. So when the pandemic hit and consumer behavior started changing, where consumers were starting to buy, uh, buy their groceries online, uh, all eyes are on e-commerce, right? We knew we had this massive opportunity to capitalize on, but we needed to move quickly, but strategically in order to capitalize on that. And retail media was changing drastically. You have all these platforms rushing to beef up their capabilities. And internally, we our retail media approach, uh, particularly with search marketing, was very fragmented. It was managed by multiple teams. Uh, we didn't really have any enhanced capabilities or, or measurement at that time. And so we made a decision to centralize it under one team, you know, across the full portfolio, across all customer uh, platforms. And this, uh, 
you know, the, the, we completely needed to overhaul the way that we work together and how we approached it. So really it started, you know, the first step was the learning phase, just understanding all the nuances, all the challenges and opportunities at each platform down to our category level, down to the brand level. So uh, we, you know, met with each team, each sales team individually, each brand team, our media team, our shopper teams to understand, you know, how can we work together to connect all the dots to capitalize on this opportunity. And, you know, we quickly realized we had, uh, we had a very lean, but mighty team, but it was, you know, a huge undertaking. And we, Quick, we realized we needed a lot more help and we started RFPing a lot of different agencies because we knew we didn't just need the hands on keyboard support, but we also needed the tech and the capabilities uh, to help us grow and, and scale. And so we identified the right agency to help get us there. And, you know, it's been, uh, it's, it's been a huge help since. And, you know, throughout, throughout the process, it was important to sort of take everyone along for the journey with us, making sure that we're optimizing our ways of working constantly uh, and evolving and improving as we, you know, as we gain learnings. Great. Um, for IBM, it really started with having to do that organizational change, uh, you know, making sure that we're not business unit by business unit. We've been like that for a year. The business units still exist. When we came to marketing, we had to put our, cons our customers, our clients and our prospects first. So uh, the marketing organization really put that forward and said, how do we create, you know, a marketing organization that is going to speak to what the customers care about, not what we as a business care about. So it's something that uh, coming from a media background, audience first is completely the way we go. We build our media plans off of the audiences. And we saw that all the business units were targeting the same people, IT and business decision makers. And they're like, oh, well, it's different. We're like, no, it's really the same. <laughs> um, and there's a lot of people and you don't actually know who they are who are in, a, in this buying decision. So uh, we needed to structure our um, organization as such. So uh, the silos were broken down and they came through in terms of the campaigns that really resonated resonated with the marketplace. Um, and it's still evolving, um, but you know, we're really speaking to the clients as to what they need. Obviously right now, AI, big deal. We're obviously pivoting uh, more towards that. We were, we're in the business of AI. We have been for a long time, um, but how do we just shift the whole marketing organization on that anthem? Uh, in terms of our examples of marketing transformation, digital transformation, the Adobe stack was a huge uh, transition. Um, we had great, I think one of the biggest things that I uh, was happy about that transition was that the leadership really owned it and spearheaded it and we had a full uh, buy-in. I've, I've talked to other companies where they said, yeah, we like an executive bought the Adobe stack and none of us use it. And we're like, um, because they didn't like bring us along with that journey. And I think that was super important. So the way we leverage it in a media perspective is mostly with um, the Adobe audience manager. So the uh, DMP, we're leveraging a lot to mine a lot of the data and collect all those signals so that we can do, um, you know, the right audience targeting with our first party data and integrate that with all the platforms that we can use um, in that audience first um, approach that I mentioned. Awesome. And stepping back a little bit, I think the word transformation in total, but also with digital can be really scary. Um, and it's not necessarily a enterprise wide change, um, like Arena's talking about, or, um, you know, a massive company restructure that everything's changing and nobody knows what the future is going to look like. I think a digital transformation can be as simple as onboarding a new uh, third party partner to help you, um, you know, streamline insights and, and get to your conclusions more efficiently, um, or even, you know, updating a new process internally to uh, make data more accessible to many different functions. Um, so it doesn't have to be as, as big and scary as we make it out to be sometimes. Um, but at Unilever, we really want data to be our competitive advantage in, in digital. Um, it's changing the world around us. It's changing how we you know, go to market our business models, um, how we plan, build, and market our products in total. Um, and at the end of the day, if you think about your lives and you know, everybody in the audience as consumers, um, you know, they look a lot different since uh, a, you know, a small device came out in 2007. They look a lot different, uh, 
you know, since COVID has happened and we've moved on from it. Uh, but I think the point being is that it's constantly going to change and evolve. And as, as a company, we're trying to keep up with our consumers and make sure that we are delivering the right products uh, to meet their needs and anticipate their needs um, to better their life and, and you know, make their day-to-day uh, -day, uh, you know, well-being uh, more facilitated and, and more efficient. Great. Super helpful to hear those examples because I know digital transformation has many different meetings based on your role and what lens you're looking through. Um, so thinking a little bit about data now, um, how can data-driven insights help improve your marketing um, efforts? So Tanya, do you want to kick this one off? Sure. Um, so I think data-driven insights, it can be everywhere, specifically from a media lens. Um, we are trying to do it in every platform possible, even to our linear TV. Um, so, you know, we're working with vendors like VideoAmp to tag all of our um, video activity to be able to say, hey, like, is this actually reaching our unique target? Um, and using that to inform the upfront buy, which is happening right now. And our video counterparts um, are all there, you know, enjoying no celebrities apparently because of the writer's strike and things like that. Um, but anyway, so um, that's informing us and that's something that, you know, a few years ago, we, we were not in that position to use data to inform the buy. We were using planning tools and surveys and so on, but we're getting more and more advanced um, with how we use data. Um, we're making sure that we have all of the insights and um, the intent uh, audiences that I mentioned before, uh, first party feeding into what we do uh, in terms of targeting for digital. So those are kind of two examples that we're we're doing there. Great. And Arena, do you want to expand on that as well? Yeah, absolutely. So data is at, at the center of how we operate. Um, oftentimes in my career, I've seen a lot of this kind of set and forget approach where you're focused on one main KPI. And so long as the objectives of that KPI are being met, you're kind of in this complacent mindset. But we have so much data at our fingertips now that it's important to look at a broad set of KPIs so you understand you know, the, the full picture, the bigger picture of what's happening. Uh, return on, understanding your return on ad spend is great, but what are the broader implications of your investments? Uh, how do all the dots connect and how do you measure you know, different sort of tactics uh, in a uniform way? Um, what is, like, are you retaining your existing uh, loyal clients? Are you uh, targeting and bringing new people into your brands? Um, is your investment being impacted more uh, in one channel versus another? And then in general, like how do high, uh, upper funnel and high level media campaigns have an impact on what we're doing, you know, from a performance marketing? So all of these questions are really important and data, you know, data can help you connect all the dots. So you're making sure that all the work you're doing across different teams is more unified and cohesive and being measured, um, you know, in a unified way. A lot to think about. Um, so challenges, usually the audience loves this one. Um, so what are some common challenges organizations face when implementing data strategies and how can these challenges be overcome? So Jake, you want to kick us off? Yeah, for sure. Um, I think for us, and, and hopefully many of you out there, we're not the only ones that experience this challenge, uh, is going from the actual, okay, we're going to make this digital change and trans transformation and everybody's bought it and excited about it, to actually going and operationalizing it and working on the day-to-day -day and figuring out what doesn't work uh, and hopefully test and learn and, and you know make changes and adjust. Um, and I think the, you know, the way we've gone about it um, we recently, similar to Arena uh, here at Danone, is we brought retail media um, in and kind of collapsed the investment funnel so that we look at digital commerce and total media under one roof and with one kind of decision-making criteria of how we manage investments and how we can best go to market to meet customers. Um, but that's complicated and, and, you know, in theory, it's really great and easy and you're going to have this one source of truth for how you manage your investment decisions. But in practice... There's a lot of different opinions. You have lots of different customer priorities. Each brand and category has its own uh, set of goals and priorities. So you have to really figure out how you land the change versus, uh, you know, with all of the individual, you know, team members that are actually out and the ones that need to understand and take action on it to make it successful. Um, so one of the things we've done is really focus on how we can track the, you know, set KPIs that we want to say are the success criteria 
for this change, but then also make sure that we are tracking and showing and, and highlighting wins as we go along um, so that each of the team members become evangelists of sorts uh, to support the change and further be storytellers. So it's not just uh, you know the leadership team that say, hey, we're doing this and it's working, trust us. It's everybody on the team is having it in their hallway conversations um, you know, or, or on, on their individual team meetings and are really feeling the value of it. And then that's how we ultimately win and land the change more efficiently. Yeah, I, I totally agree with that. It, it definitely needs to have the follow through. Um, like, as I mentioned, we had a great leadership um, factor that, you know, brought us all along with them on this journey in terms of transformation. But then you do need those evangelists. So those are the people who will keep it going, um, who will keep saying this is what we can do and get people excited about that. So we have an amazing audience team, for example, that that sits with people and just says, like, what is your business objective and how can I help you solve that with the tech stack that we have? Um, so that is that is huge uh, to have that kind of evangelization. Um, but then also a sense of realism. I think it's very overwhelming in, in terms of how much data there is. And some people might go off on, you know, tangents, say like, I could target these three accounts that visited this website that did this action, let's do it. And like, okay, well, you could just call them. Um, you have their number, you have a salesperson who's talking. So, you know, making sure there's realism as to what the technology can do, but um, how does it actually impact our business outcomes? Um, what is the outcome? Is the impact large enough to, you know, is the is the juice worth the squeeze for, for what we're doing? So that's a big thing that I think is a challenge that it's so exciting that all of this data is available, but let's not get lost in the minutia. Yeah, to build on that, I think transformation is never easy, right? It requires a lot of stakeholder engagement and handholding. And I think one of the critical components of a successful transformation is just to really have that one team approach uh, to you know, set expectations early on, uh, bring everyone along for the journey with you, uh, be tr transparent and, you know, encourage feedback along the way, uh, be open to change, uh, be collaborative. Um, and feel safe to make mistakes. Um, I think Raph said it this morning, you know, be okay with failure, be okay with making mistakes because ultimately, you know, that's where you're going to learn and that's what's going to help you improve the process. Like I know I've made my share of mistakes throughout our whole transformation. And I think it's great as long as you learn from them and adapt quickly um, because the next time you're going to nail it, right? When you know what not to do. <laughs> and then I think the second compo component, and it's something, you know, I think a lot of us have seen from time to time is just working in silos, right? Oftentimes we're trying to create this big change in an organization and each team is kind of operating in their own viewpoint. So it's important to not just connect the dots vertically, right? On making sure your high level objectives across your organization, across your categories and brands are being distilled down to, you know, the brand level, your each of your sales channels, but also horizontally, right? Making sure that we are bringing in all the right stakeholders. And sometimes we don't think about is like who needs to be involved, but we don't always think about who is impacted by these decisions and these changes. So it's really like taking a holistic but a detailed view of, you know, everyone that's part of this process and everyone that it impacts because like the worst thing that happens is like you leave people out and then they're like, well, what do you mean? <laughs> you know, how did this happen? You know, this impacts me in so and so way. So you you know, bringing in people for the ride helps you open up the blind spots a bit more and have a better understanding so that you uh, you ultimately have a smoother transition process and, and a lot more kind of people cheer, cheering it on on the sidelines. Great advice, everyone. Um, okay, Jake, this one's for you. Um, how has data-driven decision-making changed the way that you approach marketing and what impact has it had on your business? And I think the first part we kind of touched on, but uh, especially just understanding the impact it's had would be. Yeah. Um, so I think, and I'm going to go on a limb and say like the, my other two co-panelists here, uh, they probably, you know, being data, uh, data people, um, it's made decision-making a lot easier. I think in some ways um, there's no more debate necessarily on, is what does the data say and how do you look at it? But it's more of uh, you know looking at and saying what's the right KPI to look at for this specific goal and objective as we uh, decide uh, what we're monitoring and and what is the decision criteria. Um, and you know I think 
when you're looking at optimizing audiences or building audiences, you now have a whole wealth of information that you can use to do so effectively for each channel that you're targeting, whether you're optimizing a campaign or individual tactics, um, or even connecting national media with lower funnel conversion media that previously has you know, operated very much in silos, as Irina was saying. Um, it makes it a lot easier. And I think what we're trying to work on with our teams is continuously think about what are the right KPIs to assess success for each of those decisions. Um, and that ultimately lines up with the, you know, the business goals and strategies for each of our brands that the leadership team helps to inform, um, you know, at the start of the year and throughout the year. But ultimately, the freedom is with our teams to, um, you know, manage the day to day optimizations and campaigns and really focus on, okay, for, uh, you know, each individual um, decision, what is the right tactic to, to look at and, and assess whether or not it's working. Um, I think the challenge is how do you avoid getting too in the weeds on the data because you can probably spend too many hours sitting and, and uh, you know, going back and forth and deciding what piece of data to look at. How do you want to use it to, uh, you know, fit your narrative or hypothesis that you have going in? Um, and really, it's about figuring out how you can, you know, streamline and not get in the weeds too much. That's a perfect segue. So, Irina, how much data is too much data? Love this question. So I have a question for the audience. How many people have been in a situation where you have too much data? All right, we have a lot of us. So it, it's interesting. Prior to Danone, I was in the direct-to-consumer uh, space for about 10 years. And when you have your own, when your own website is your primary sales driver, you have an endless treasure trove of first party data, um, which is amazing, right? It's a lot more simpler. But when you have a lot of uh, when you have your sales coming from multiple channels, um, especially brick and mortar, it's a lot more complex, right? There's so much data that we have at our fingertips. We have in-store data, online data, sales data, consumer data, advertising media data. So it can really be a lot. And retail media is constantly changing. And um, like, do you, if you look at just Amazon as a platform alone, just Amazon alone has Amazon Marketing Cloud, Brandview Pro, you have your sales dashboard and endless analytics. So how do you simplify them and ensure that you're using them in the right way? Um, we, we have so much data available to us that it's important to understand what KPIs are most important for you to track. Um, from a high level and down to the details, but to also set those benchmarks uh, and objectives up front and update them frequently, right? As you get more data, you can tell a more robust story and you just build upon the reporting that you have. So we, we try to take a crawl, walk, run approach, right? Where we start out small when we get a new data source, we sort of play around, take baby steps, do li little, uh, little reports, and then we build on them and uh, start to get more uh, detailed with the data. So it's, you know, while, while tracking multiple data points is, is important, it's just important to connect the dots across, uh, across the board to simplify it as much as possible, which is not always easy or straightforward. Great. Um, okay, so um, what advice would you give to organizations that are just beginning their digital transformation journey? And what are the most important things to keep in mind as they embark on this process? So Tanya, you wanna? Sure, I was gonna actually say the same. Crawl, walk, run. I think, Think of um, what are the quick wins that you can do um, with the transformation, whatever it is. Um, what are the small things you think, like, if this goes in place, I can do X, Y, Z. Just how, and then what is like, how do you expand that just a little bit um, and say, okay, if I, you know, this is going to take longer, I'm going to then do this, you know, next three things. Um, and having that, ex you know, having people again, evangelists and leadership with you along the way and making sure that you're communicating so that you don't overpromise um, and you are making sure you're setting expectations of what's possible. I think a lot like, I mean, you know, a lot of things happen at the decision-making level where this big, you know, transformation, whether it be software or, you know, an offering gets sold in and you need to figure out what to do after it gets sold in. So you need to have that, that, uh, element of realism, but also that attention to detail and communication to, you know, make sure that you, you sell that through and keep, keep that momentum going. As Jake said. Jake, do you want to add yeah. to that? So I think it's really important to, 
you know, stand back and, and take an assessment of where you are individually in your company's uh, digital transformation journey, whether it's function specific um, or, you know, enterprise wide. I think it's very much expected for uh, different parts of the organization to be in different places, and that's perfectly okay and will help inform um, what types of projects or uh, you know, deliverables you take on. Um, I think set realistic but really ambitious goals as you're trying to embark on this new journey. Um, and as we're going through it, you know, ourselves in some ways, um, make sure that you can track the, uh, you know, expected realities versus what's actually happening and continue to share that scorecard out uh, with the rest of the business to, um, you know, further drive uh, excitement and momentum behind it. Um, and then I think one other Thing to remember is you know the not everything has to be a flashy uh you know ai machine learning blockchain it doesn't necessarily have to be one of those three things that you take on in order to be making digital progress within your uh your company your ecosystem those are amazing technologies uh, but as i mentioned before something as simple as creating a repository of audience data and insights to then inform the entire organization um, with the same you know baseline foundational data set to then go out and make their plans and and not kind of overlap and bid against each other uh, is a ton of progress even uh, you know in and of itself or onboarding a, a third party to help um, you know streamline more information so I think the changes don't have to be really huge uh, in order to make an impact and even just asking this question of what okay what can we do uh, better in digital probably means you're on the right track Great. Okay. Our final question, and then we might have like a minute or two for Q and I, right? Okay. Um, so, thinking forward, what is the future of digital transformation and and data driven strategies? A lot there um, in marketing, and how do you see these trends evolving over the next five to ten years? So, Jake, you want to wrap this yeah. up? So I don't know if anybody is as uh, big a movie buff as me, but I definitely am. You know, kept up and a little bit about the Skynets of the world uh, coming and taking over. Uh, that's a Terminator reference, if anybody else remembers it. Uh, but in all seriousness, uh, I think it's really about monitoring consumer interactions and behaviors and understanding, um, you know, how they're going to continue to change. And we built these digital, digitally savvy muscles as marketers, take collapsing the funnel into one investment bucket, um, you know, optimizing and, and target setting in real time and trying to make the experience seamless for consumers, bringing, you know, beautiful creative to them wherever they meet. Uh, you know, day to day. Um, and I have a hunch that we're going to have the opportunity to use those muscles um, in more and more places as we get, you know, farther and farther in the future. Um, you know, an example being as a consumer, we all are probably trying to find ways to cut the cord, uh, even if it doesn't make financial sense. I imagine someday soon they're going to, uh, cable companies are going to get rid of the old coax connected box and everything's going to be digital. And as a marketer, you then open up the ability to have you know, precision type audience and targeting the way you would on a search or display ad uh, across all of your national, you know, TV assets, uh, which for marketers becomes a really powerful tool uh, to reach your consumers and deliver the right messages to them. And that's just one example. So I imagine we'll probably have a lot of these things coming to life seamlessly where we'll be able to, to use the muscles that we were building, you know, right now. Exciting. Great. Um, so we have maybe a minute or two left, so I'll open it up to the audience. Does anyone have any questions for our wonderful panelists? Okay. I can ask a question. Um, um, so I guess we hadn't prepped this one, but um, so just in general, what I would say, what out of everything you're working on, if you can speak to this, what are you kind of most excited about just piggybacking kind of on Jake's kind of thought on transformation. And I love that TV, television example. Um, what are you just most excited to see happen hopefully in the next few years? Or what you're most excited to coming to fruition? I mean, I think, I think more data connectability with the traditional media channels. I think we're starting to play more in things like podcasts and, and, you know, TV, linear TV, like how can we make that smarter? Um, how can we do more connected TV, online video um, that's a little bit more um, targeted and with that, you know, sort of more data accessible. That said, you know, there's a lot of challenges at the same time with privacy and so on. So we're mm -hmm. kind of like 
I wouldn't say I'm excited, but I'm excited to see like what happens yeah, me too. in general. Yeah. Really <laughs> um, and it's, you know, it's the right thing. We're all consumers. We don't want our data to be misused. Um, but we also want to be able to get the right message in front of the person that wants that message in front of them. So I think I'm just, you know, interested in seeing kind of what happens to the landscape. We're getting more and more technologically advanced with data, but there are more limitations that we are all going to have to, you know, deal with when um, we're taking privacy into account. Sure. Great. Um, Eric. bias and your national broadcast bias how involved are you with your video investment teams your traditional teams to uh cultivate the audiences is that something that you're thinking about now and giving them feedback from what you see from a, a digital perspective or are you kind of just like all right this is what we think go for it and then we'll tell you if it's working or not in a couple of years no i mean we're we're totally in, intertwined um we set our audience approach up front, like that is something we have to do and that grounds us in everything we do. So if something is not executed, it's like one of our pillars of our, our media planning. So if it's not connected to our audience and you can't have rationale as to why it's connected to our audience, we're not going to do it. So that's a, that's a through line for everything that we do. Yeah, I think for us too, um, this is the first year that we're going through the upfront planning process as one kind of combined unit um, and even just being, you know, connected for these different conversations of what are each brand's priorities, how, you know, what are we trying to achieve across, you know, the, the we're getting rid of the funnel of sorts and figuring out what are the right channels to meet each of the, the target audiences and consumers. Um, and then how do we buy efficiently and leverage, uh, you know, what the national team is able to do with the you know digital and commerce team across all retail media. Um, so I think you know similar to Tanya, it's it's kind of our base foundation in terms of how we're looking at um, setting up for 2024. Um, but it's it hopefully will continue to be the you know the single source of truth of of how we build our plans together. Else, great. Well, thank you all. Great job. Thank you.